The content presented is for entertainment purposes only. Some content may not be suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey everybody, Jay Rhymes here with the Periodic Review. I am here with my lovely co-host. In first chair we have Miss Rianne, and second chair we have Mr. Alakai. Hello everybody. How are you guys doing today? Hola. Hola, señorita. Buenos noches. <laughs> you don't even know what you're saying. Que pasa del pizza. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Yo, Caro all, Taco okay. Bell. All I'm Spanish, so sorry I started that. All them Spanish speakers out there are going to be like, yo, what in the actual... <laughs> yeah, we need to stop. We need to stop. Just... All right. Well, let's go ahead and get get uh, get updated on what you guys have been doing this week. We'll go ahead and start with Miss Rianne in first year. I went through a bunch of family memories yesterday, and it was very emotionally <laughs> exhausting. I, I bet. Dang. So, yeah, my mom brought down two bins of, like, all these pictures and memorabilia mm. and stuff, and it's been sitting in my office, and now that I have to work from mm. home, I had to clear out some space, and I was not emotionally or mentally prepared to take on that task, apparently, because <laughs> it was Father's Day, and my dad had pa- has passed, and so mm. yeah, it was, Jacob comes upstairs, are you okay? I'm like, I'm fine. There was, <laughs> there was Moss contr- uh a consoling. There was lots of ugly crying. There was happening. mass consoling. Hey, Dalton, welcome. So that was that was a fun way to spend my Father's Day evening night and poor Dang. Jacob. But it's I mean it was good. It was very cathartic in many ways, but it yeah. was still <sighs> it's still hard. I found a lot yeah. of good happy memory pictures, so that was a plus. <laughs> so that's the update. Well, it's good to have you over in second chair. Mr. Alakai, how, how are you doing, buddy? I'm pretty good. Um, that must have been really, <laughs> that sounds really emotionally draining. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. It was good, though. Yeah. You know, your well, body needs to process intense emotions. And so mm-hmm. putting yourself in a position to do it is hopeful sometimes. Yeah. So, right. You know. Doing it and doing it and doing it. Wow. Yeah. So what's new with you? Yeah, what's new with you, uh, buddy? Well, first of all, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. I mean, right? It was yesterday, but still, happy Father's Day. And all you fur baby parents out there. Yeah. <laughs> um, You're just saying that because that's what you are. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, I am. A fur, a fur baby or a fur daddy? A fur, a fur baby daddy. I'm a baby daddy. <laughs> fur baby daddy. Not a fur. Not a furry daddy, but a fur baby daddy. You're it's not a, a furby? Difference. Big difference. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, my dad and I, my dad and I and our family went Sorry. down to uh, we went down to Zion yesterday and went for a little hike. So that was fun. Oh, well, that's awesome. Uh, is that a- the national park or is that Zion the uh, like the city? Is it there's a city uh, called Zion or I, I think just no. Zion National Park. <laughs> Zion National Park. Okay, yeah. that's what I figured. Yeah, <laughs> it's very Excuse clear me. you're not from Utah. Oh my goodness! I wasn't born and raised in Phoenix, Arizona. So we went to Zion National Park, which is really cool. We got to go hiking for a little bit. Um, R.I.P. my sister's feet because she doesn't really like doing like extensive walking. Like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, um, I feel but, her pain. But it was really fun and it was really really cool. Um, so that was so that was really nice. Um, I finished Stranger Things season four yesterday. Or. The first, the, the first part, part. Half. yeah, first half, <laughs> yeah, really, really, really good. It was funny because I started it midweek, and I was gonna be like, "All right, let's just we're gonna fin- we're gonna watch this really, really slow. We're gonna take it really slow." Because when I watch stuff, I tend to watch it very slowly. I don't binge a whole lot. Yeah, because um, then it ends too soon. Yeah, I like to take <laughs> my time with stuff, but with this, I was like, "No, you we're gonna that, keep ladies? watching." Sorry. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry. I couldn't resist. That's what she said. Uh, anyway. Okay. Anyway. My bad. I'm sorry, Alec. <laughs> um, You're ruining my groove. I, I think she actually might be helping it. That's um, what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Thanks. Um, but yeah, it was, it was really good. Really good show. Um, yeah, not much else new this week. How's work? So, oh, it's good. It's good. Do you like it still? <laughs> 
I like it. Oh, you know, I got to I got to hang out with some work friends the other day, so that was that oh, was kind of fun. Nice. I don't really do that a whole lot, but it's it's yeah, nice when I get either. to. I, I like the people that I work with. I work with some really cool people. So. That's good. Yeah. Nice. Well, it's good to hear from you, no. J- Jacob. Did you get a haircut? No, I didn't. I was gonna say when I when I walked in here, your like the hair on the ends of your man bun looked a little shorter. So I was oh, sure. <laughs> well, I also I guess I haven't seen you with your hair up for a while. So yeah, I've been usually wearing it down on Mondays because it's uh, it's a hair day, and so and since it's my day off, I usually just kind of let it let it lay down. Okay, but I don't know if I you put can it up see if, if you put the camera on me, but I don't know if you can see your dog just. Yep, he's, oh, yeah. he's, oh, yeah. he is he is feeling it. He is vibing right now. You're like yeah. his best buddy. <laughs> yeah, be my best buddy. He's my, my best, best buddy. buddy. And I don't get jealous buddy. at all. Buddy. No, my you're, dog. you're over here with a. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, but I'm used to both of them. I love both of them. I'm, well, you can't you can't share. <laughs> I can. That's Dal- why I'm Dalton saying. Dalton says I'm my trying... Spanish was very painful. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, hello, TV Land. Well, it's good to hear from you guys. Um, nothing super new with me. Um, I went for my first jog since like last year, How which was that? it was painful. I don't like it. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I, say, I, don't, I never. It didn't last very long because nope. I like you came in and said that you were going. I like wrote an email and then went into the bedroom and you were showering. I was like, wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> I literally jogged to the end of uh, the block and I touched the sign and I was like eh, 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 and I just turned around and like moped mope walked back because I couldn't go any farther <laughs> <laughs> oh I need to get I need to get back into the swing of things with that um no work's just been work it's been pretty busy lately so that's been that's been good yeah. um we're we're hoping to switch from a six day schedule which I've been doing for the last year and a half year and nine months ish um to uh to a five day work week which will be exciting um let's see we already talked about the the uh the gaming channel splitting from our our uh our podcast channel that way it makes sense yeah um and let's see what else have i done uh, did cleaning today, which was exciting. <laughs> really I good deep, that. Really oh. good clean on the first floor. And you made your wife a breakfast burrito, which she I totally did. appreciated. Aww. I did. It was just it was just rice, a bit of meat, and some egg. It was pretty simple and, and delicious. The cheese, don't forget the cheese. Yes, everybody likes the cheese. A cheese is a must in a breakfast burrito. The cheese. Burrito. The only thing that would have made it better is to have a little bit of potato in there. Mm. But yeah, yeah it's instead of potatoes, I'd rather have potatoes, 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 potato, 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 potato than potato, rice. Potato, potato, yeah, well, the potato. potatoes we had that I thought I was going to be able to use, unfortunately, were done. So, so well, oh, that sorry. made me sad. That's okay though. <gasps> Yo, best bur- um, best burritos in town though, Rita's. 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 We've not hmm. been to Rita's. What? Uh, I've been to Rita's like once. When? What? It was a while ago. Shout I've out. Been there. Shout out to Rita's. I'll have to try it. I'll have to try it again. It's been a while, and I didn't like the first time I went there. Oh, you well, just maybe. gotta. You just gotta. I think I good. need to get the right order yeah. or something. Oh, I finished. Um, uh, what did I finish on Netflix? I finished the Ozark. Oh my gosh. Oh, I haven't even started that. Such an incredible series. I'm so sad that it had to go. <laughs> Jacob was like, he turned it on yeah. last night, and he's like, "This is gonna ruin it for you." I'm like, "Dude, I'm not gonna watch it." I like a lot of see, it's oh, so, so dark. There are a lot so of good. shows. There, are, there are a lot of shows on Netflix that are starting to wrap up now. Like Stranger Things is wrapping up, uh, Ozark, I guess, and they just released the final season of Peaky, Peaky Blinders. I guess I still, ha- I still haven't seen that show. I haven't seen that one either. I've heard it's one of the best ones on Netflix. Though. Not super impressed with the other stuff they have coming out. Like they started a new series that's First Kill or something. First Kill? What does oh. that even mean? Oh, it, don't. It's not know. worth it. Don't. Might be another dark one. It's, but it, I mean, it's a dark one. It's about. But if it's, it's a good, Romeo dark Juliet, can be interesting. Romeo and Juliet meet. Um. Like vampires and monster killers, oh, like meets it's Buffy supposed the to Vampire be like a, Slayer. It's supposed to be like one. a dark teen. Oh gosh, like, it's drama awful. Or something. Oh, like yeah, it's awful. I remember when they used to do a ton of that. Like and they had Teen Wolf going on for and a it's long time. So sexualized, so oh, yeah. sexualized. They're like after I mean, your kids. Ooh, I don't like it. I watched. <laughs> I watched a couple episodes just to 
really try and give it and i was like nope 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 nope, your nope. euphoria is really sexualized but i mean it's also a very accurate depiction of uh, that kind of life in certain areas with teenagers that have problems with drugs so huh uh, all right well before we get too not that too, vampires too deep into stuff. <laughs> werewolves are before we get too deep into stuff, let's do our, our quick little advertisement here. Today's episode is sponsored by viewers like you, so thank you. You can send us all of your topic ideas, articles, and video links to theperiodicreview at gmail.com. If you missed the past live stream, there's no need to worry because we got you covered. The Periodic Review podcast is now free on the go at spotify.com, so don't forget to listen and rate the show today. Hopefully your subscription will be earned today, so don't forget to hit that red button, click that damn bell, and turn on your notifications so you don't miss a content release. Not just the bell. That, that bell. Damn bell. <laughs> <laughs> the best way to support the channel is to share this live stream with family and friends, crush that like button, and leave us a comment down below. Second best way to support the channel is when you have a fiver or a tenor laying around and consider donating to the channel today. All of our links are in the description down below. And welcome to the show. It is the third Monday of the month, which means Miss Rianne is going to lead our discussion today. What are we talking about today, oh, Miss Rianne? In first chair? There's so much. Fu- hey, so Christopher. Much. Welcome. Welcome to the channel. Got Dalton and Christopher on tonight. Yay. So <laughs> I always want to talk about things. Well, okay. So I figure what better... <laughs> Thing to talk about what is farting what is, what is farting i just heard a farting noise was that is your that chair? my chair i think it might have been my chair i'm okay. sorry but i always want to talk about well just things in my life that's what i know so that's what i'm going to talk about so i've been having some interesting experiences with um you know i'm involved in politics but like the political climate and leadership and the lack of leadership that we have well, we're talking about leadership today? Yes. Woo! Are you so excited? <laughs> actually, so uh, last semester in one of my communications courses, oh, I actually gave like a full speech on leadership. I and, like, love this right the, now. Like, the, like some of That's the pillars some that are required. Whoa. Some of the pillars that are required in order to have good, healthy, positive leadership. So okay. I, I'm, excited, I'm excited to hear your thoughts so, on it. So I have lots of thoughts, but I'm curious. Please tell us what the pillars are. I, I would li- I would like to know. Okay, so these aren't like established pillars from like any one source. This is just kind of stuff that I've learned myself um, from leadership that I've worked with and from being in leadership positions myself. Okay. Um, I've actually learned some of these uh, some of these things from Jacob over here from when I worked with Aww. him in Vivint. Yeah. Um, so. Th- so one one of the. The things that I've noticed that good leaders have is just the empathetic mindset. And um, Simon Sinek is really good about uh, opening opening this up. This I is, love Simon Sinek. Yeah, the, yes. guy, the guy's brilliant. Um, oh, my goodness. Yeah, I know. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting distracted by dogs over here. But um, <laughs> so when I was working at this one place, there is – I'm not going to say where <laughs> just in case – but um, I had two different bosses at two different times. Uh, the first one that I had was like, he would always call me out on mistakes that I made whenever we were in groups. Mm-hmm. And he would never like pull me aside. It, it was very belittling, humiliating, and it didn't m- motivate me to do better. If anything, it just made me want to leave. Um, so he called very, you out specifically or yeah. just mentioned the mistake as a general? both so he oh, would, geez. so like in group meeting like we would have meetings and then sometimes he would do it in front of um clients that we worked with and i was not like yeah it was very that's not nice it was and it was very condescending and i wasn't a fan of it and it made me feel very small and like dehumanizing almost yeah and uh they let him go <laughs> eventually and uh, got this, the next boss that I had was much, much better. Um, this boss would actually pull me aside and he would be like, yo, so I'm noticing X, Y, and Z is happening. What's up? What can I do to help you? Like, this is where we need to be. Like, what do you need? Yeah. Um, very like, like that's, that's more empathetic. He's like, what can I do to help as a leader? What can I do to help you improve? So 
Uh, the point that I'm trying to get at with that, with this, is that um, one leader cared more about getting the job done. One leader cared more about um, his employees mm. and their ability to get um, everything done. So mm. um, that's like that's like one of the biggest things that I've that I've had because Jacob was very good about being empathetic with us and in our job and really love and appreciate you for that. <laughs> no, thanks, man. Love appreciate you. Yeah. Cause it's a, it's a, I will say you actually set the bar very high. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's sorry, a, but not sorry. <laughs> no, you set you set the bar very high for leaders that I could put my trust in. So I think you were actually the first boss that I had that I felt like I could trust. I couldn't say that about any of the retail jobs that I've worked, and I couldn't even say that about when I worked at the climbing gym. Oh, and I loved working at the climbing gym, but that's awesome. I yeah, love sure. that. No. That just made my heart happy. <laughs> See? Okay. I love that. So this is where I'm kind of concerned with leadership in our country and just even like in leadership or elected positions. And like I saw this clip from Simon Sinek that mm-hmm. said leadership is a choice, not a... Oh, shoot. Now I got to look it up. It's the quote. I posted it. So I have the exact quote. Hold, please. Okay, while you're looking that up, uh, Mr. Dalton, thank you for for chatting in. He says, uh, he comments, we should not consider politicians to be our leaders. They should be our representatives and our civil servants. I agree, but the problem is, is once they get in that position, they think they're leaders or whatever. And then, anyway, I I have a whole spiel about local. But leadership (laughs) is a choice, not a rank. And then I added, or an elected title. Um, I feel this has become an issue with our society. We don't have enough true leaders um, in elected positions or decision-making positions. Mm. And we're truly seeing the effects of it internationally, nationally, statewide, and even on a local level local field and the reason why i say this is because i'm involved in local politics right just by the sheer nature of my job right but some of the behavior i see exhibited just from politicians in general is so infuriating yeah and it's so oh it's just infuriating because the level of gaslighting the level of bullying of um just passing the buck and how it's everybody else's fault and Mm. trying to take credit for something that they had nothing to do with or even opposed or it just, it infuriates me. And I'm so irritated because it's feeding into this, like good is bad and bad is good. You know what I mean? Or bad is what I tell you and good is what I tell you. Right. Right. And so I'm just wondering like how, Because I know we have amazing people. We have amazing leaders and people who would make amazing leaders. But how do we encourage them to be more active Mm -hmm. when our culture is such that like people who actually try to do good get called out as bad and vice versa. And people who are doing horrible, shady, crappy mm, Mm. (laughs) are and not doing the job that they were elected to do and it's all become just a bunch of political theater so to speak it's really it's really hard too because that's that's the leadership that we have and that's the leadership we see so people that work under under that and actively see that like that's not going to motivate them to step up and try to do better if anything it's just like well the person that i'm supposed to rely on and trust is isn't even do, isn't even doing right by me like how am i supposed to do right by them and step up so yeah like well and i guess i think it may maybe all comes down to personal accountability and that's like true. people are not rewarded for being personally accountable anymore because we have as a society <laughs> this is a very controversial statement but we have as a society have totally reinforced and rewarded victimhood Mm. on multiple levels that that's a good point especially when it's come to our our military and the things that have gone on 
especially recently in the uh, the haphazard pullout that we did, like like literally there was a lot of mistakes made and a lot of people's lives were affected by that. Not only that, but that pullout allowed the 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 Taliban to come in and basically retake all of those strongholds that we had for what two decades, and they took it over in two weeks, and now it's all being you right. know, ran by the Taliban again, and nobody is taking responsibility of that nobody's being held accountable held accountable like no one and that's really unfortunate that we are kind of in this state of well it's not my fault i want to read what dalton just said because i completely 100 <laughs> percent vibe with this uh, the best leaders are often those who do not wish to lead a great leader will not seek power exactly yeah. Yeah. and that is so amen. true amen P- the best leaders are the ones that are like who do not seek it. Mm -hmm. And that's my concern. Those who seek power and who seek those elected, like that is concerning to me because. But how are you supposed to get somebody in there who doesn't want power to be a powerful leader? Uh, You know, that's, That's this is the dilemma. (laughs) This is the dilemma. This is the (laughs) philosophical dilemma that we're struggling with. Cause like, while. I don't necessarily want to be in a position of leadership or power or anything. I don't, I don't want that responsibility. That's heavy to me. Well, if if every, if everybody wanted it, then everybody would go for it. But I mean, right. Right. But at the same time, I'm infuriated and want to see something different. Like I want to call these people out on their shiz and how they can say shit. That's fine. Can Okay. I'm yeah, trying to keep it family friendly. We're keeping it PG. Well, I can guarantee it's going to be more family well, friendly than some of the stuff that's been a going soft on PG-13, in right anyway. should say. Because yeah. PG thirteen, we can you can have a few f bombs. So we're doing a soft well, PG. Anyways, <laughs> let's, let's, <laughs> let's, come let's come back. Yeah, no. So, but that's what's so frustrating is because <laughs> I'm seeing, and I think there are people who are willing to step up and do the right thing, but then the system is so corrupt and the people who are in the positions of power have such a tight hold that they won't let it, won't let anything happen because they've set themselves up for some cushiness. Right. So I've all, I've noticed that with like every position that I've had involving leadership, it's, I've never been in that position that I've, because I've wanted to and because I've gone for it. It's always been because I've, either been asked to or because I didn't see anybody else doing it. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I feel like a lot, a lot of leadership positions tend to be bestowed on people. And a lot of times it's, they're not bestowed on the right kinds of people. I agree. Yeah. Like, but when you have the decision between two people, and neither one are like super. Sorry about the dogs, everyone. They're having, they're having some fun. They're having their nightly. They're wrestling. Yeah, it's about six thirty. This is like their their routine. But I get. F- Shh. Y'all need be to still. chill. Jeez. Be still. Ah, ah, be still. Go back over to Alakai. No, no, no. You stay here. You stay here. Okay, everybody chill. Um. <laughs> We, like, sometimes, like, I'm sorry, but I did not care for the choices that we had in this last presidential election. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I completely agree I mean, with you. Yeah, like, I, I didn't even vote this election. I was like, I could I could not in good conscience. Like, I, I, I didn't really feel right engaging in either side. I really didn't. I and feel now, you, dude. I like, feel like Trump... <laughs> Trump has a lot of issues, a lot, and he did do a lot, and I feel like he did do some things to expose some of the corruption and the absolute ridiculousness of how our system has evolved. Yeah, but do you also think that it might have been like a fight fire with fire kind of thing with him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And I kind of like, I like that about him. Is that he was kind of fighting fire with fire kind of thing, and he wasn't afraid to call people out. And I think that's what the majority of America was attracted to when they elected him. Is mm-hmm. he was calling out the crap from he's calling this everybody political theater crap. Yeah, and he got like, and they came after him full force with so, and but it's still happening. It and I'm just like, 
even with the Republicans and like the two party system is bullshit. And it's funny because like remember that election with him and Hillary? It was always like everybody was talking about like, oh, we'll just choose a lesser evil. And then this election <laughs> came around and I was like, well, they're both lesser and they're both evil. So, I mean, like, <laughs> I don't really, I don't really yeah. know where to go from here, dude. <laughs> like, yeah. And I mean, uh, I tell you what, he, this administration's Trump, a hot mess. Yeah. And, and I'll be honest. I, as a person, I'm not a fan of Trump. And there are some things that he's done that I don't agree with. But there is something to say for how our economy was booming, you know, and skyrocketed during those years. Well, because uh, yeah. he was taking Almost care of Almost everybody America. had a job. He released a lot of nonviolent criminals that were in jail for stupidest reasons. Yeah, now helped, all the violent ones helped are helped on the, the uh, you know, the minorities out quite a bit. There was a lot of good things he did. He just wasn't a great person. Gas like, gas was as low as two seventeen. <laughs> yeah, I just, mean, just legit. Saying. I haven't seen that since my early twenties. One, okay? one ninety nine. At one point, I was in some town in Texas. One, one year. That was that was nuts. How low that was. So this is my thing. Like, yes, we do get people like Trump, but at least he was willing to call stuff out. Is he the best candidate? Mm, no, but at least he was willing to hold people accountable. Now yeah. there's oh, no. Oh yeah, he held a lot of people accountable. He fired quite a few people actually. And there's no accountability anymore anywhere. And I feel like um, the people who try to call it out, even here locally, there is a small faction of people that are like, no, there's no way that could happen. You know, and I'm just like, are you freaking kidding me? And so to even call somebody out and hold them accountable for their poor behavior. Like, you get totally... I mean, it used to be that, like, we could all get behind, like, we had a a standard of, like, you know, yeah, that's not okay. Mm -hmm. Now it's just... Oh, I don't know. And maybe it's just because I'm more involved, but I am so irritated with the lack of personal accountability, the lack of integrity, and the lack of willingness to serve. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, our system has become one that you get into it so it, you can be self-serving. Not yeah. so you can fulfill your responsibility as a representative of those that you, who elected you. Yeah, so, this is... Oh, yeah, I guess you... Well, sorry, qu- go ahead. Well, I guess, question, like... So that whole power-hungry mindset, do you think that's an American thing? Or do you feel like that's more of an, an international kind of thing? International. Yeah. It's a human thing. Hmm. Human thing. Uh, yeah. It is a total human thing. You can go to any country. You can go to any any place, and it it's a human thing. And that's why that's why some of these systems that everybody thinks are so ideal, like socialism and communism, continually fail, is because they refuse to acknowledge the human factor of power and how enticing it is and how corrupting it is to the human mind Mm -hmm. well i think it also because you can justify social socialistic and you know fascist ideals is that it completely wraps itself around trying to coddle and baby people through through life and it doesn't and it does that to the detriment of everybody else yeah again it rewards victimhood. Yeah. And that's definitely, we need a lot less than that in our world. Thank and you for it, the chat in Dalton. He says, uh, we're going to keep having crappy people in leadership roles until we go back to the basic traditional values and personal responsibilities. And he says we should vote on policy, not popularity or personality. 100%. Yeah, I agree. Definitely focus on the issues for sure. But the problem is, is that's almost impossible to do in a bipartisan system. We can only have, like, literally, it is set up to only have two parties. And even Abraham Lincoln himself said, or was it him or George Washington said? A house divided cannot stand. Yes, and so, We're like, more divided than ever. Right? Than we've ever been. So, all it does is it placates to the people who are in power. They're keeping everybody distracted with stupid bullshit. Like, literally, the most stupid bullshit than, like, how can we make our... Our city, county, state, 
nation, whatever. It's a, it's a Bible verse. It's, it's a whole entire... Uh, <clears throat> so it's actually a Bible verse. Uh, House divided against itself cannot stand. stand yes, but there so was a there Matthew was a, twelve twenty two to thirty two Luke Mark. It's all in there. Okay, yes, but there is a there was a president who said that a, a two party system would be the death of America. Um, it was in yeah, it was in Lincoln's speech. Yes, see? House divided speech in. June sixteenth, eighteen fifty eight. Thank you, thank See, you, Duck Duck Go. <laughs> and it's like it's like a whole entire spectrum too, but like that spectrum only has two sides. You have like the liberal versus conservative conservative mindset, and like of course there's overly conservative conservative. conservative. No, but there's, <laughs> there's also libertarian. There's also libertarian. That's true. Libertarian isn't necessarily conservative. Libertarian is limited government, and I. Th- think we need to get back to that a little bit more and i think the government has gotten way too big Mm -hmm. too big for its britches yeah anyway so that's my thought but i feel like we even need stronger leadership and better leadership like we need to be focusing on that locally and start locally because that's where your vote has the biggest impact impact and so like I think people also will vote based off of sound clips and everything, but I'm just, I really, cause it is, we are in primaries right now. Like there Mid-terms. is, we are, well, no, but like here locally, we're, yeah, we have a locally primary, or the primary race. Yeah. But midterms but, for, yeah, it's midterms and stuff for like state and stuff. And like, yeah. I encourage people to really get to know the candidate as much as possible. And it really takes people being educated and engaged and willing to like have buy-in. And I think that's what's so sad is like, we don't have enough of our communities involved with the outcome of the whole community. And that trickles so that now all these decisions are being made by just these people who are so far removed from the common man or the person who works day to day. Joe so America. They're, <laughs> so they're making decisions that have impact us horribly, but definitely impact their pocketbook very well. You know what I yeah. mean? Well, and that's what's so crazy about like all these like radical decisions that are being made with with biden and his in his administration especially with <laughs> wrapping up 40 was it billion dollars and shipping it over to to ukraine like mm-hmm. who knows where that money went and what earmarks and whose pockets got lined with that i bet not all 40 billion actually got there it's probably play, paying a lot of bureaucrats that's my, salaries that's, that's my, what i'm thinking that's my tinfoil hat though my little <laughs> It's, it's not a tinfoil concert. hat when it's going to be proven right in like three to six months because that's usually what's. That seems to be the 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 leeway time three to Seriously. two to three months before conspiracy theories turn out to be the the reality of it all, <laughs> and then accepted that that much time later before um, before being said or deny deny deny. Right. Just kind of been the administration for the last two years. So do you think? that leadership in this country is going to get better or do you think it's going to go worse? Well, I think it's a pendulum and it's going to swing. Yeah. I think, uh, in my, in my, my two cents worth, I think we're going to swing way back to, to conservative. I bet we're going to be, we're going to be, uh, red for, for a good eight to 12 years. I don't know though. I'm nervous. With with how this administration has run things and it's literally like destroying everything that yeah, kept our country together like it's driving also up the prices as, like crazy but inflation but jacob this administration is also as corrupt as hell well so all, it seems that all leadership is corrupt it seems like that everybody has a piece of you know as a finger in every pie so to speak um like there's corruption on, on both sides there's radicalism on both sides i mean it's difficult to get the only right person that's going to be the only answer. Like there's going to be concessions. You're going to have, you know, give and takes as far as like, they might be really good on one policy and really bad on another one, you know, Mm. but you just kind of do what the best you can 
you know, with the information that you have. And that's why it's important. That's really important to do your own research. And it's important to, to get knowledge on the issues. Like if you do your research on the issues, that's probably the most important thing you can do. Like, don't worry about who the who's who and the what's what, but definitely get an idea of where you're at on the issues. And that'll definitely help in the long run for sure. So then what happens when you know where you're at on the issues, but no candidate represents that? What do you do? Um, what would you do? That's a good question because, you know, you could have the, the two, the two major horses in the, you know, in the running, but you may give your vote to somebody else who's obviously not going to win, but you know, at least you voted for the right person that you felt was the best for the job. So, so next election, I'm going to ride in Mickey Mouse. No, I'm just kidding. Dude, <laughs> just kidding. I will divorce you. <laughs> oh, ouch! Jeez, that was heavy. Jeez. Was sorry, but like, oh, that's right. We're not. We're not. I uh, am not. A, mm. We're not promoting Disney anymore. So I have to pick a different. Uh, Wait, why are we not promoting Disney? <laughs> what happened? Well, all, all of the bad stuff that's been happening around Disney and the, you know, all of the identity politics they're pushing, um, they're trying to be as inclusive possible in like uh, children's films and series. They're trying to push uh, normalcy as far as like, you know, sexualized, sexualization yeah. with children. Um Hmm. And they they've caught uh, how many now? Like thirty or forty employees? Oh, so, yeah, of uh, Disney employees of being involved in child pornography. Oh yeah, we, we yeah. talked we talked about yeah. that, yep. didn't we? Yeah. So yep. this is why I'm like, and if you look at some anyway, I don't want to go down a rabbit hole. People are going to label me a conspiracy theorist, but I'm just saying all the conspiracies I've had have come out to be true on many levels. So. But, you know, to speak it out loud, you're going to get a ton of. Well, yeah, and we're putting back. we're putting all of our <laughs> all of our content on 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 pro pro democratic runnings like on these 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 large social conglomerates, which is probably why we're not getting as many well, views as we could be getting. But I think yeah. we're getting more now because we're just we're just speaking and not. Um, we're trying hard not to uh, censor ourselves as far as like our thoughts and feelings and opinions on things. We're censoring some of our language for sure, but not not our opinions for sure. See, and here's the thing. I have no issue with gay people. I have no issue. No, with, we love our gay friends. Yeah, I have no issue with gay people or trans, whatever. What I do have issue with is when you try to introduce... <laughs> sexual orientation, sexual, like, before their brain is even developed. You know what I mean? You're trying to push an agenda of, um, this is what gay is, this is what women is. Like, and it's causing so much confusion. And I feel horrible because that confusion and that craziness in the head causes so much depression and anxiety and it's like mm -hmm. our kids one are struggling with that more than ever now yeah. and i feel like it's because of like all of this stuff if you're born white then you're automatically a racist and if you're born with a penis that's okay you're not necessarily a male you can be a unicorn or you can be a she or a woman or whatever but then we can't even give an actual definition of what a woman is in our society because that's politically incorrect, which is awful. And I am sorry, but I am a woman. I have a uterus and I have breasts. And if my body functioned the way it was supposed to, I could utilize my uterus to create life and carry and deliver a baby. Mm -hmm. That is a female woman. A woman is an adult female. That is literally what the definition has been for years. But now all of a sudden nobody can define it because anybody and their dog can say I'm a woman. And I'm sorry, but that bothers me because we are erasing women. Yeah. And totally devaluing attack. them. It's definitely an attack on the, on the, on, on the female sex for sure. And that is so awful because that is one of the most divine things on this planet. 
is the ability to create and give birth. Create life and give birth. And now all of a sudden, we can't define it or that's available to everybody. But it's not. Anyway, so I get really fired up. But oh, I will say. This just in, uh, just this morning. Who's um, Justin? <laughs> just in case. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Um, so it looks like the uh, the trans swimmer that won all those awards uh, was just recently banned. Um, yeah, because they for, were saying that she doesn't sports. have a. They're saying she doesn't have a physical advantage when she clearly does because she went through puberty as a male and has all the testosterone and everything that comes through pubescent development of a male, which c- creates better bone mass, muscle mass, strength, speed, all that stuff. So obviously there is an advantage. Anyway, I, yeah, well, I don't want to talk about it cause I get so much angry. I'm yeah. I just, I just thought it was interesting that, uh, that they changed, uh, changed the rules and which, which ended up banning this, this, uh, the swimmer. Who's I don't think they women. changed the rules. I think they just created more clarification of what the rules yeah, are. I think that's, I think that's what, uh, yeah, that's probably what they did. Cause that's the whole I'm point. I'm just reading the headlines. So yeah. I, I apologize. I haven't no, read okay. through them, but well, that's the whole point of but title. I think that's nine. important. That's important. Like we need to protect our women. I agree. Yeah. And it's not that women can't fend for themselves, but we serve different, like there is a divine purpose in the female and the male to how this world functions, how we, how we function as a species, how any species functions. Yeah. Whether you believe in, in the, you know, a higher power or a creator or even just in nature, like we have, we have a purpose and they're, they're very, you know, they're, they're the same. Yes. So I just like, I struggle with it. If you believe that you are, if you were born a male and believe that you are a female, you know what? Fine. Wear whatever clothes you want, do whatever you want. But the minute you start infringing upon other people and demanding that they see you as such or make concessions and give up their, their rights. And I I don't know. It just, it really, really bugs me. I definitely want to get back to, to back to your, to your main topic, but just to, to throw in my, my two cents worth, like, um, I have a, I have a friend that I grew up up with that um you know when i was very young in grade school and we'd been very close friends through uh, through grade school and high school and even many many years after there obviously when you grow up you get married you move away you know start to lose touch and stuff but um like i am i'm willing more than willing to you know use a person's pronouns as far as like if they want to be called he she or she her or whatever you know, I'm willing to say her, even though she's a he, like, I'm totally okay with that. But for people to infringe on people's rights and to do compelled speech, I think uh, Jordan B. Peterson is a great person to, to look up, especially on, on the issue of uh, compelled speech and uh, pronouns and stuff and all the laws and silliness that's going on in the UK right now. It's, it's actually very, very scary because it's infringing on our, uh, on our rights of, of freedom of speech. Um, but I'm more than willing to say, you know, like Caitlyn Jenner is a she. I'm totally okay with that. Just as long as people understand, I don't think okay. you're a real woman or a real okay. man. This is the thing. This is a great example. Caitlyn Jenner, right? She okay. changed her name, went through the, did her thing, whatever. But then the fact that our society gives her woman of the year is yeah, extremely that frustrating that because make any sense. then there are so many women who have worked hard and done things like that's what bothers me. Like, how is that not cultural appropriation of women? How is a man coming in and winning medals and winning awards that were designed for women, not cultural appropriation of men uh, culturally appropriating women? Yeah. 
I mean, there's definitely something to say for that. That's true. I mean, there was even a um, the the first uh, Olympics had had like the end game X Games like in the Olympics. They had like Olympic skateboarding, and they have a women's division. And there was a trans woman who competed with the the females, um, and of course, dominating every single one. <laughs> and all of these individuals, I believe, are losing out on those opportunities to to win. Fair, fairly, number one. Number two, when you start getting into like uh, fit other physical sports, like let's say, I don't know, boxing, MMA, like I don't think that's okay for, like I think Joe Rogan has the right idea on this where we shouldn't have trans athletes um, in opposing genders to be versing each other because there are, you know, benefits or or non-benefits depending on, on which which things they're they're gonna do? Yeah. So, um, but let's get let's get past that and kind of get back to uh, your main topic. Oh yeah. Unless this is where this is the road we want to go. Well, down. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's like, up to you. This is your well, day. Well, this is kind but. of a no. This is part of the issue is we don't have any leaders or people who like they're all trying to placate everybody else and not willing to make like. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just. I'm frustrated. So, like, they're not willing to take a hard stand on this sometimes, and that's what frustrates me. Even people on the conservative side, which is to conserve, like, a way of life, to conserve. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Like, a lot of Republicans aren't really standing up for, or at least they are quietly. <laughs> but they won't do it out where it counts. Yeah. And and I, and I, and I get it, and I understand because it. Because they're more worried of the way... about the popularity vote. That's that's the thing is that like it's not popular to to disagree with with trans individuals. It's not it's not popular to to disagree with. Well, you can, but then they're going to do everything in their power to try and cancel you. Yeah. Well, which I wouldn't be surprised if we get somebody who's going to try and cancel us because we're taking well, a hard you do stance you. on s- <laughs> something very specific. Well, like, I'm we, not against- we love our I mean, we love everybody like yeah. we can be friends with pretty much everybody. But when it comes to infringing on like our inherent rights, you know, if, whether you believe they're divine or not. I mean, our country is founded upon, you know, belief in a higher power um, and we should treat each other like in that certain way that we are all, you know, children of that divine power. Um, and I think that's a good basis to, you know, to, to be on things, even though. Even though I consider myself a agnostic theist, meaning I, I believe, like I still pray, I still talk to God, like every day. Um, I just don't believe there's a way to prove or disprove. I just am on the belief and the assumption that there is something greater out there. I just don't know who or what it is, and I just <laughs> am going along with what I understand and what I grew up with. But I think that's important to keep that idea especially when it comes to our constitution that you know we have god-given rights i mean those are really important and they shouldn't be infringed upon right but we still love you we can still agree to disagree we can still have a conversation you know but we don't need to be angry at each other (laughs) we can still have attack the idea not the person (laughs) exactly we are not our ideas (laughs) well now there is an argument for that thoughts anyway what I you, could just say, as a, as a man thinketh, is thoughts do become things. Mm. So, what do you want? Starbuck, lay down. Anyway, so what are you, so Alakai, thank you for sharing your thoughts on what a good leader is. What are your <laughs> thoughts of a good leader? <laughs> Jacob? Oh, you're asking me? Yeah. Um... I think we've talked about this in the past, but I think leaders um, are definitely someone who are not only willing to do the work or have done the work that you've done, but is also willing to to teach, to be a a student. I think a, a good leader is to be a good student. I think a good leader is somebody who chooses to have the buck stop at their foot like <laughs> at their feet, you know, when the buck is, you know, being passed around and you can say, well, you know what? I made a mistake. You know, let's, uh, let's figure out how to, 
how to remedy that and so that we don't have to worry about that happening again in the future. Um, I think a good leader is, is somebody who's honest and open. Like, like I think it, I mean, you can disagree without being disagreeable, if that makes sense. Like, you can say, mm, you know, I don't know if that's going to work very well, but I'm willing to try it, even though I haven't had that work in the past. You know? Yeah. Um, gosh, that's it's a very it's a very nuanced question. I don't I don't know how to <laughs> how to formulate it, but those are the the things that pop in my head when I think of a good leader. Um, somebody who's a good communicator uh, says exactly what he means and means what he says. You know, or she, you know, if, what she means and what she says, and they just they just do it. And yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I've said my piece. Does anybody else have anything else to say? I'm, well, we gotta, I'm gonna we gotta get gotta myself all one, fired up. We gotta again. hit. We gotta hit our one hour mark. So we got another ten minutes. Oh, well. Okay, I will say one leader I've been impressed with um, is Marlo Oaks who is our state treasurer. Oh, here in Iron County? No, a state. So oh, Utah? For the state of Utah, yeah. I actually, I really like him, and he actually did um, an appearance on Tucker Carlson today, recently. Yeah. Which is really cool, because he talked, he stood up against, like, this whole, like, um, oh, ESG, which is um, economic... Or something social um, score. So it's like it's like saying if you don't hold these beliefs or do these certain things, you won't be able to have access to funding or money. Like we won't lend to you if you don't have a certain amount of um, a certain amount of resources used by solar or if you use coal then if you use coal energy then um you don't get funding kind of thing oh we're switching over to no i'm talking about energy no i'm talking about how marlo oaks is a leader who's speaking up about that and against that which is good because you don't want political ideology to come into because it then ceases to be a capitalist like it ceases to function as um an equal playing field and it becomes a political ideology where if you don't think the same way i do then you can't exist Mm -hmm. kind of thing and that's not okay like we need to be able to live in a world where everybody can exist and, you know, people aren't put away into a little box because of wrong think. Oh, you think wrongly. So therefore you go over into the corner, you bad kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's like. That's, ser- it, that's seriously what it's like right now. It's like, oh, I disagree with you. But it's not like I have a counterpoint to that or, hey, that's OK. We can disagree and we can move on with our lives and we can still live in this world and, and still enjoy it together. You know, even though we're not on the same page all the time, like, it's just like, oh, hey, you said bad things. Now you don't have a job anymore. Like, what's that about? Or, hey, you can't speak on social media anymore, even though it's pretty much the public square at this point. And they really need to put some proper like laws around it so that people aren't just like removed because like there was a I think it was like a journalist or a writer or something like that that was on. Um the Joe Rogan podcast not too long ago. And she's been on a couple of times. She was banned from Twitter. I think it was like two or three years ago or something like that. Or maybe it was a little bit earlier. I can't remember her name right off the top of my head. And I apologize, but she was completely removed from Twitter. She was banned because she said that a a man is not uh, a woman is not a man or something like to that effect. Like it was very tame. Like it wasn't like, or a woman can never be a man, or, or a man can never be a woman, or something like that. Yeah, J.K. Rowling got roasted because she said a trans man can never give 
like could never be uh, a mother, a mother or a biological a birthing mother. person. Yeah. What's and that about? Like I just and I'm sorry. Nobody but can it, keep it straight. Even AOC tried to keep that straight, and she couldn't keep it straight. If anybody ever refers to me as a birthing person or a cis woman, <laughs> cis woman, I will lose my. Sh- I am a woman. Okay, that's it. I am a woman. Yeah, didn't didn't somebody who who was it? Was it Demi Lovato that did that? Said she was like proud to be a woman, and then like a no, bunch of her Adele. Adele or was did. it Adele? Oh, okay. What was it that, that Demi Lovato said? And then she goes, oh, just kidding. I'm non-binary. And then everybody shut up. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> and that's okay. Like, again, like, we can agree to disagree. And honestly, like, I haven't really decided where I'm at on this. Because I really do think it, that freedom of speech is very, very important. And if we are going to throttle or say hey you can't say certain things okay well where's the line like i don't i don't know where that's at just yet i i can't be like a dan bongino that's like an absolutist when it comes to freedom of speech because i just don't know where i'm at on that but i do believe that you know if somebody says some things that are nonsensical like let's say for instant flat earthers (laughs) but we still love you guys but you know, I think that you know we can we can survive on a platform where people say, "Well, the Earth is flat, and here's our proof." And I believe that you know people who believe that the world is round can say, "Okay, well, here's our proof," and then let people decide after they've you know they've researched both of these things and decide for themselves if they want to believe in flat or round Earth. I mean, what does it even matter, honestly, in the long run? Because then you get, anyway, uh, but then we get to the thing like, okay, well, what is truth? Well, and then you get people who you know? get these wild, harebrained ideas, and like, <laughs> what happens when the flat earther gets elected to president to be president? I mean, like, ugh. I met a flat earther once. Oh yeah. Oh, please tell us this story right now. <laughs> yeah, do, tell us share? the story right now. <laughs> if you if you feel like you can share, I mean, I mean, that's an interesting story. <laughs> I don't think that. The person that I met is ever going to watch this, but anyways, just um, don't say names. <laughs> it or was places. A, it was a neighbor, and I had to take everything that she would say with a grain of salt. She was one of those people because um, she didn't. She would over exaggerate a lot, and I mean, I might be being insensitive, but I, I just, I always kind of got the vibe that. Whenever she would say something, it was very, very blown out of proportion. So, oh, okay. And then, like, uh, you know, like our families got together. We had we had dinner together once, and you know, her and I were ta- were talking off to the side at one point, and she brought up the whole flatter the flatter theory, and I was I was just like, where is this going? And it was slow. It, it slowly, I slowly started to realize that she was actually a flat earther. She didn't outright say like, yeah, I believe that the earth is flat, but she was, was saying like, some things are just like, hmm. it was like the more that we started talking, the more I realized, Oh my goodness, this woman is a flat earther. <laughs> and so <laughs> it was just like, I, I, I brought up like the whole, like just casually brought up like the earth being a sphere and she was just like oh no that's complete bullshit and i was like oh no oh no <laughs> and then from at that point i pretty much just turned off my hearing so, <laughs> <laughs> like very very underwhelming story but i mean like at that point i was just like all right <laughs> like, yeah yeah well when somebody comes with that kind of wild thing that's crazy <sighs> See, I'm like, trying. No, oh, no, that's a no good. Way. That's there's a good no question. Way. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I I just saw I saw a comment on our on our uh, our stream feed here here that I thought was really interesting. Um. So uh, Dalton said uh, social credit score. So this is this is something that's implemented right now in uh, the Communist Republic of China, right? Mm-hmm. So so basically, it's a system which allows. And they're kind of trying to implement this with um, uh, when it comes to carbon foot carbon footprint w- with uh, with businesses. So businesses are going to have to keep track of like all their their business workings as far as like you know how much carbon they put in the air and blah 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 and and uh, basically they're going to get a score. 
If you want to know what it is, just go watch the Tucker Carlson <laughs> yes, today. Marlo yes. Oaks, the Utah State Auditor, actually describes it very well. It's easy enough for them for people to understand what it is. Yeah. So So that's that's basically a way for them to basic to increase business for those who are conforming to the idea that we can only produce energy in a certain way and then they're going to get a bad score if they're not producing energy in a certain way or producing a larger carbon footprint etc cetera, etc cetera. this is the whole global warming like agenda with uh with with the left right now and it's pretty crazy but the social credit score is uh, they're talking about applying with the whole chinese thing is that basically it monitors like people you look up online so let's say let's say for instance the rubin report is bad so if you go to the Rubin Report and you watch the Rubin Report, the the credit score will see, oh, you watch something bad. That will put bad stuff on your score. And then if you only watch, I don't know, let's say, uh, I'm trying to think of like, like, like big left-wing people right now. Uh, the Turks, let's say the Turks are on the good side of things. So if you watch more hours of the Turks, then your score would go up. And so basically that would allow you, this would also apply if uh, people were overweight. So if you're overweight, you could only buy certain kinds of foods. Oh yeah. And you would be charged more. You would you'd be taxed or higher or whatever the case may be. And that is bad. We should not want that at all. <laughs> Anyways, on either side. On either side. Not Nobody like, should be wanting that. It's not like, oh, well, you identify as a trans woman, so therefore you have to, like, on either side, on either political ideology, whatever, it's not a good thing at all. Not no, a good thing. It's not good for, for, for nature. It's not good for nurture. It's not good in our belief in a higher power. It goes against like our, our very nature of, of who we are, like as a basis of, of human beings, like it just doesn't, it doesn't compute. Um, and it's all based on, well, it obviously on theory does for some people because they're trying and, to implement and it. And thought. <laughs> and what's, well, I mean, I think uh, Ben Shapiro like said it pretty well when he talked about his, his grandfather who had schizophrenia and, and how it would be very detrimental to him if he continued to tell him, Oh yeah, you should definitely, you know, communicate with those voices in your head and you should listen to what they say oh yeah because then you'd probably <laughs> tell somebody because you know schizophrenic it's their voices in their head are, they're yeah. dangerous it's it's sketchy. Can get it's sketchy it's very sketchy um but it, the, the same thing with somebody who's who's feeling like you know they're in the wrong body or they feel like they should be a different sex or a different species altogether like you know we could we could get into that um and it, no, it's a really important no. to get the care that you really need to because like mental health is a really big deal right now and unfortunately it's getting worse and it sucks that it's so expensive but if you have the means and the ability definitely get help for sure um but if you're going to choose to identify about whatever like you do you any final thoughts alakai alakai's been quiet <laughs> Well, it's because you've been talking. And I've been talking. <laughs> Sorry. You just don't shut up very well. Uh, this is also this is also a topic that I try to like I don't really engage in this kinda in this kind of stuff just because I know this is something that starts fights and I'm a lover. It's not a very fighter. triggering. So yeah, I get it. I'm not gonna like, yeah. I'm <laughs> We whatever my, you are, whatever species you di- identify of, we still love you. We really do. Like we have no hate f- towards, you know. People. So are you worried that somebody would hear it and start a fight with you somewhere else or that we would get in a fight here or No. Um I'm just curious. Yeah. <laughs> it's more like I don't know. I have I have thoughts on it, but I don't want to talk about it here on a podcast. Um, I think that's fair. Like, if you don't want to publicly announce anything or personally. yeah, I think I think I've talked to you guys about it. Yeah. But like, I don't know. I, I guess my my biggest thing is like, I'm just trying to do me. You you do you too. Be comfortable and love yourself in your own skin for the person that you are. Like, yeah. That's that's really the only two cents that I have. I know, like for a lot of people, that's easier said than done because self hate. I feel like is a very yeah, we're like, our worst, it's a real we're thing. worst critics it's, for it's sure. It's a real thing, and Which, our our society that constantly 
utilizes, you know, your imperfections to sell things to you. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, that's literally what it's marketing is designed to do, right? Like you don't have this, so you need it. You, you have this, so you need this or blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's designed to feed on that, which is horrible. Yeah. And and I understand that, but it's like, we live in a world where you, you, uh, Jake, Jacob, you brought it up. Um, your own mental health is probably like one of the more important, <laughs> one of the most important yeah, things definitely. For, for you. So whatever you can do to find your own self love, whatever you can do to find a way to accept yourself and love the person that you are, whoever that may be, find a way to do it. Love yeah. yourself. We need to, we did, we need to spread more of that yeah, and, and stop. Don't hurt yourself or others for sure. And stop reaching for power and start, and start reaching for more love. Oh, look at you bringing it back to the initial topic. I love it. So you think we need more leaders who are focused on love and or what? Hell yeah. 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 Alex. Hell yeah. So when are we going to see you running for office? No, I'm just (laughs) Oh, hell no. (laughs) Not everybody is meant to be a leader. Just because you might be a really good go getter does not make you a good leader. So yeah. And just because you're a good person doesn't mean you'd be a great leader. Yeah, hundred you know, percent for sure. Any last thoughts, Miss Rianne? Before no, we wrap I've this way too many. this bitch up, I've expressed way too many. <laughs> <We're>... <laughs> well, let's on the, on this. Like Dalton put, it brings a, a good point. He says that that it's sad that we live in a world where people are afraid to share their beliefs for whatever reason. I know I feel this often, and I get that. Like. It, it's hard to find, you know, good people that are not willing to just judge you because you're just like, hey, I have these thoughts. You know, what do you think? Because, you know, we're so easily divided, especially when it comes to, you know, you know, our thoughts and our feelings. And it's like, well, <laughs> we all have our different thoughts and feelings. Yeah. And that's what makes us interesting and unique. I mean, to be human is to be uh, hypocritical. I mean, <laughs> like, I believe in God and I talk to God like every day, but I still don't know how to prove that he's there or not or even if it's a he i mean who, who knows but it's just like it's it's you or know if there's it's interesting. a he and a she he 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 <laughs> that's bad anyways <laughs> y'all thank you so much for watching another video we really do appreciate it all of our links in the description down below and from our family to yours good night bye bye good night peace out home dog Hello everyone, Jay Rhymes with the Periodic Review. Today's video is sponsored by viewers like you, so thank you. Hopefully we've earned your subscription today, so don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit that damn bell to turn on your notifications so you don't miss a content release. Check out the video links at the end of every video to view our previous content as well as visit the description section for more links to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching today's video and from my family to yours, good night.